Yo, what is up, guys? It's your boy, Joey Kane, sub7fitness.com. Today, I'm joined by... Me, Bennett. Bennett and... Victor. And Victor. So what we're going to be doing right now is I'm going to be taking them through a live workout where we're basically going to be training from home with the coronavirus and everyone on lockdown. We're going to show you that you can still get a great workout to build muscle and lose fat while you're at home with minimal equipment. Victor down below me has a pull-up bar in his door jam, which is super great. Honestly, if you just have that in like one band, you can still do pretty much any exercise out there. And they're only like 10 or 15 bucks, so I highly suggest getting one. You'll notice that I don't have one, and that's because I actually have a pull-up bar in my backyard. But since it'd be hard to carry my camera out there, I'm just going to skip out on that today, train my back in a different way. And it also has a pull-up bar, which will get me off screen, because he has one built into his house, which is kind of cool. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, what I'm going to be using today is a band. There's one singular band you can get an amazing workout with. Two chairs, which you'll see what I'm using them for in a second. The yoga mat, which is not necessary. It's just because my floor is hard as hell, and I don't particularly like going onto it without that. And maybe a circular band. This costs like five bucks. The other band costs like five bucks. A yoga mat costs like a dollar. So yeah, you can definitely still get an amazing workout in from home. So what we're going to do right now is the three of us are going to warm up real fast. So. Let's get to it. Push up, twist in. Loosen up the lower back, which you guys can't really see from that angle. Is as I'm doing it, I'm also popping my heel off the floor. What this is doing is it's just making sure I'm not getting any unnecessary tension in my knees. If I keep my feet locked, you'll know that some athletes, especially football players, will tear their MCLs or their PCLs. And so just by popping your heel off the ground, you make sure that that doesn't happen. So Victor and Bennett are pretty experienced lifters. I'm going to start with some backstrokes now. So we're going to go pretty hard today. So this is going to be a difficult variation. Um, for the purposes of this video, for my double O's that watch the recording or for when I post it on YouTube, I'll also talk about some of the easier variations that you can do with certain exercises throughout this workout. He froze. Yeah, he's back. Yeah, I know you guys froze and then you guys went to sleep. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm gonna cross those arms in the front and bring my palms up in the back. Right here, this is warming up the chest. The main function of the chest is actually to adduct or bring the arm across the body, not to push stuff away. So while the bench press is really good or a push up is really good because you can load those movements up, maximal chest activation will actually come from things like cable crosses and stuff like that. Now, that being said, you want to make sure when you're training, and this is more specifically for when gyms open back up again, that you're training both. You want to make sure you're doing exercises where you can get max load, and you want to make sure that you're doing exercises where you get maximal activation. If you only bench press, that's not super great, and if you only do cable crosses, that's also not great. And you should also not be doing chest flies, because they're really bad, which I can explain in a different video. All right, let's warm up the lower body some. So what we're gonna do is something called open the gate. <coughs> we're gonna warm up our hips and our hip flexors. opposite motion so we're going to close the gate so come from that side in also warming up the same muscles for the most part okay. 
a lot of people are really worried right now that they're not going to be able to maintain their gains or continue making them. Uh, and of course, the coronavirus does suck. It's unfortunate the gyms are closed, but you can still build muscle and lose fat while you can't go into the gym. Because our bodies really only know a few different things, and training principles across training principles apply across the entire spectrum of working out. I'm gonna do some high knees now. And so what I mean by that is as long as you're getting tension. I'm under tension and you're progressively overloading, you will still be able to make gains and you'll still be able to make progress. Now, it's really easy to progressively overload while you're in a gym because you can just add more weight to the bar. But while you're working out with your own body weight, you can progressively overload by doing harder variations of movements that are pretty commonly seen throughout anyone doing stuff. So for example, you can do push up. Well, once you can do 100 push-ups or whatever, it's not really going to do much for you. You can switch to a harder variation of the push-up. And so I'll be showing you some of those variations, some of those progressions in the day. All right, let's go butt kickers. And then after that, we can get started. Are you doing a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or every day? What do you say? Are you gonna do it every day or Monday, Wednesday, Friday? Well, I'm gonna do it every day for people that um, their scheduling works out differently. So if someone's training Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, I'll do that as well. Um, for you guys, if you're training Monday, Wednesday, Friday, like I am, then it's not too big of a deal. Yeah. All right. So what I'm grabbing my backpack for is I'm about to do some handstand push-ups with Ben and Victor, but to make sure that I don't injure my shoulders, I want to make sure you warm that up fully. So when you're doing a really intense exercise, what you can do is you can load your backpack up with some textbooks or just grab something heavy. You can do it with a chair as well. Put the stuff in there and then just shoulder press a few reps for a few sets. And you should be able to get a good warm up before you really get full exercise. Uh, take that. Uh, or if you have dumbbells, that also <laughs> I also have dumbbells. They're just not in my room. I just have a weighted vest. Nothing works. Weighted vest. Straps are hitting me in the face. So what I'm doing right here is I'm getting my biceps and my shoulders warmed up a little bit. This is kind of similar to an exercise called an overlap here. Wait, what are we doing? I'm just warming up for uh the sample That was 50 pounds. <laughs> you warm up with 50 pounds. So whenever I do a set of reverse pyramid or a set of something that's going to be really difficult, like handstand push-ups or wall-assisted handstand push-ups, I make sure to do at least two warm-up sets, typically no more than three. So I'm going to rest for 30 seconds to a minute or a little bit less than that because I'm recording and I don't want this video to take forever. And then, uh, I'll do a second set with the backpack and then I'll be all ready to get started. Thirty seconds to a minute is now five seconds because I'm recording. So, just get my second warm up set in right here, and then we'll be all right. Now, if you don't have the ability to do this, because you don't have any wall space, 
Hold the hands in. If that is too difficult for you, if you're not able to go fully upside down, holding the hands in, the thing that you can do then is you can do something like this. You can do pipe push ups. All right, so let's do that. <laughs> All right, so how I'm doing this. There's not a way to do like a view on screen. What you say? Well, on Zoom, isn't there a way to make it so you can see like everybody's cameras instead of one main? Uh, yeah, I'm. I have all three showing on my screen. How do you do that? I don't know. I just didn't change any of the settings. It was automatic. <laughs> wow. mm. Can you only check? Check it. I, I only see one main. Oh. oh well. Um, go to speaker view. Top right corner. And then click gallery view. Yeah. Where's speaker view? Top right corner where it says exit from screen. Right next to that. I don't have that. Uh, are you in full screen mode? Yeah. Cool. I'll send you a picture of it since I can't share okay. my screen and also be on Zoom at the same time. Okay. Yeah, I don't see that. Uh, I'll do it though later. Where's that? Oh, wait. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll just deal with it later. Okay. Well, I'll send you a picture of it. It's that top right corner. I don't have it. Hit Alt F. Okay. Oh, well, we'll do that later. Okay. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. So, in the interest of saving time, because I always want to make sure I'm in the gym. Possible. I'm going to superset this exercise with something for our legs. So what that's going to look like. Or your uh, shoes off. If you're on a carpet, what you can do is put plastic bags around your feet. But all we're basically going to do here is a with a hamstring curl. That's what that looks like. So what that looks like. You come up, curling in. Well, what makes this so effective of an exercise? You want to work together. The exercise allows them to do that. If you do both together. Ah, 
Once everyone has hit that, then we're going to go into our second set of those handstand push ups. Remember, if you need an easier variation, you can either do a handstand hold or you can do a pipe push up. Are you going to demonstrate a pipe push up for those who don't know? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. So, in the interest of people who can't do handstand push up, I'll demonstrate what a pipe push up looks like. So there's two main variations. Uh, there's two main variations of pike push-ups you can do. You can do them feet elevated or not feet elevated. So this is what a normal one would look like. Basically, I'm gonna turn sideways like so, down, then push back up. Now this is super easy. If you want to make that more difficult, what you can do is you can elevate your feet. So that looks like this. Now I'm much closer to being actually perpendicular to the floor. You want to make sure that your head is going past your hands. If you've ever done pike push-ups, especially if you're elevated, it can be a very difficult exercise. So it's definitely a good one. How many reps are we doing? What's up? How many reps? Going to failure on pretty much all of them. Okay. So going to uh, concentric. I realized that I can't do a proper handstand push up here, so I'm going to have to do pipes. Okay. Or you could do them freestanding, you know, wall assistance. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even do that. <laughs> Out of all of us, it'd probably be you who could do it. I know. <laughs> no, I don't know what you're talking about. I haven't done um, handstand push-ups other than the set I just did right there since I injured my back, and I got eight. I think my all-time PR for handstand push-ups was 12. So not a bad drop-off after not doing them for like four months. <laughs> All right, so yep. now we're going to do the second set of those bridge hamstring curls. A good rule of thumb for all of these exercises, for all of the body weight training that you do, is to train to failure. Now, if you can do more than 20 reps, that's just an arbitrary number, but for the most part, if you can do more than 20 reps, you can move on to a harder variation, and that should drop. Now, if you're training for uh, endurance, 20 reps is okay, but what we're training for mostly is going to be hypertrophy. <laughs> So if you want to continue to build those, you're going to need to do the variations. All right, last set of all of these, and then we'll move on to the next exercise, or next super set. One thing to watch out for too when you do these, is if you notice you have wrist pain, just make sure you warm them up. Just roll them around, roll them around the other way. Boom. You want to make sure that they're ready to go. I don't have any wrist pain at the point, so I'm good. That's one thing to be cognizant of. All right, Ben, I say something funny to the people while I'm working out. Um, something funny. 
<laughs> ah, y'all laughed. Something just funny. <laughs> you have some laughter background music. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, second set, quite a big drop off from my first set, but that's okay. I haven't done these in a long time. Whew. All right, so now that we've finished shoulders and leg, oh, actually one more set of legs. Yeah. We'll be skipping out on leg day. Every day. I feel like I'm, feel like I'm washing my floors, man. <laughs> <laughs> For real, making it real clean. <laughs> I've been moving around so I can nice, even, clean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> when you're doing these exercises, uh, when you're doing this particular exercise as well, you want to try to get that bridge high and then curl. You don't want to curl and then bridge. You want to try to make a one continuous motion. Backyard, but it has built three sets of we're gonna come up, boom, 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 boom to failure. If alternating archers is too difficult for you, if you can only do one or two reps, then what you can do instead is you can just do regular. What I'm going to do, since my pull-up bar is in my backyard, is I'm going to so if you don't have a pull-up bar, you don't have access to You can anchor the band around something solid or sturdy, like a quick shelf. And we're just going to work on some resistance band. <laughs> <laughs> what we're going to do is... Are you, sure? <laughs> Are you sure about that? I was waiting for it. Come on. Okay. So what I'm doing... Oh, you can't see. What I'm doing is I put a chair right there up against my bookshelf. I'm going to push my foot against the chair at the same time that I row. And what that's going to do is just keep the bookshelf from falling over. So cool. If you guys want to get to that, we can hit our... You said we're doing what? Pull-ups? Pull-ups, yeah. Oh, uh, Bennett, you should be doing alternating archers. Okay. Do I just do regular pull-ups or alternate? You How can many? Do alternating archers if you can do more than like two reps per arm. If you can only do like four total, then just do regular pull-ups. Okay, wide okay. right or close? Yeah. Okay. Uh, wider grip. If you're doing alternating archers, you have to use a wide grip. Okay. So for them, since they're doing a hard variation of a back training exercise, they're likely not going to go for that long. For me, this is better really if I continue this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grip up higher on the band, which should make the exercise more difficult, but also risk breaking my bookshelf a little bit more. So my bar is not wide enough to do proper archers. What'd you say, Bennett? My bar isn't wide enough to do proper archers. Okay, if your bar is not wide enough to do archers, what you can do instead is you do skywalk pull-ups. Skywalk pull-ups, while they're really uh, flashy looking, they look cool and they're really fun, the main purpose for why they're good in this circumstance is going to be because when you do them, you're increasing your time under tension because you're specifically doing your reps as slowly as possible. Right, I'm going to have to do okay. some pull-ups after I'm done shooting this video because that is too easy. But now what we're going to do for our chest, we're going to do some alternating archers. 
So that looks like for those who don't know, you can come down into a push-up position. You guys tell me if you can see this. My head might block the entire thing. I can see your hands. Oh no, more than just are doing it. So you're gonna come down into a push-up position. Come down on one side. And then the other. And you try to use an extending arm, so this arm is little. And then as soon as we finish that, we'll go into another set of whatever back exercises. Because I don't want to break my bookshelf. Because I'm going to step on the I'm going to come down to this position here. I'm going to scroll back behind me as I can. Ready? Yeah, big What? You got it. I'm going to go a little higher. There you go. Uh, those two. I haven't done sky walks in a long time. They're so bad now. <laughs> I know, man. <laughs> I feel your pain. You guys haven't been with me on Fridays long enough. You're into it. <laughs> okay. Now that we've completed that first two and a half sets, we're going to complete our second set by doing another set of those alternating archers. Um, you guys can go back to that. I'm going to demonstrate what you can do if those are too difficult for you. So if you're more at the intermediate level and those are really hard to do, one thing that you can do instead would be a diamond pressure. The diamond pressure can be really, really good for if that is too difficult. Another thing that you can do would be more of your upper chest. I would just have one more set of both of those exercises and we'll all done with our arms. So as you can see, that way we only have to train three times a week. Still build muscle, still lose fat, still hit our fitness goals, and minimize the time that we need in the gym. So let's finish up those last set. Another thing you can do for back, which is really, really useful if a pull up is too hard, is you can face stairs. You can take a broomstick or any type of like dowel, you can put it across the back of the two chairs, and you can do inverted rows. I can't actually do that on these because these are so rounded at the top, but most chairs don't have that problem. Most chairs you can rest a dowel on. As long as you're applying pressure to it when you pull up, you'll be fine. I don't want to risk falling off the chair and looking cool in the corner. That's my band work. You have a door jam pull up bar then it has. So negatives, I'll make videos all about later.
Any push ups? So last set, we're going to be doing those alternating arches again. Yeah, arms and abs and that's pretty sure. So, if you have a band, lateral raises with the band, the dumbbells, you can do lateral raises with your dumbbells. If you don't have access to any equipment at all, do something called a body weight lateral. This. This is going to take advantage of. This is going to take advantage of something called relative motion. Put my shoes back in for this. You're going to come in. Press your arm into the ground. It looks like a side plank, but it's really going to fire up the side of the bill foot. I'm going to use my weighted vest. That works too. If you have any type of heavy object, you can do your lateral raises with that, just like Victor's doing right now. So, if I were to see exactly how my arm was, you'll see that that looks like this. Now, if you were to see it from the side, it would look like the same exact motion or the same exact end point that I would have on a regular lateral raise. So if I'm doing a lateral raise with a dumbbell, like so, boom, we're coming up to the same point. Right here. That's the same exact point that you're doing here. The only difference is instead of pushing a weight away from you, you're pushing your body away from that anchor point. So it's going to do the exact same thing that you're going to do. Next. So what we're going to do following that in our superset is we're going to do some dips. If you have two chairs. You can place them next to each other. Up onto the top. If you don't have the ability to do dips on chairs, and you have a, a countertop that has a corner on it, and if you don't have access to anything like that, you can use a modified tiger push up. Come down to the floor with our hands like so, like we're doing a plank. Okay. What this is doing is it's getting rid of the chest activation. So it's a really excellent exercise for 
myself in Bitcoin, I first started doing those modified tiger push-ups while they might look easy now we don't only do like five reps so it is a very difficult exercise pushing probably three-fourths of your body weight through just your triceps the same motion you'd be doing as if you're doing full pressure as you can see right there nice and easy what we're going to do if you got a band or do some banded bicep curls if you don't have a band you can do dumbbell bicep curls. If you don't have a band or dumbbells, you can just grab onto two heavy objects, like the Encyclopedia of Philosophy. <laughs> just feel really easy. So I want to be even more difficult. I can grab a backpack. With the backpack, all you got to do is load it up with some textbooks like I had before, and then boom. You're doing them just like that. Now, if you want to do both arms at the same time to save some time, you can also do them this way. But you probably need to load the backpack up more. And let's do one. Just a bunch of guys. Are you doing short head or long head? What is that? Short head or long head? Um, I've been doing long head mostly. We can alternate. Okay, because I just did short head. Two sets and then short head two sets. So what Ben is asking is, which part of the biceps do you want to focus on? So if you want to focus on building the peak, which is the, the top part, what you can do is you can do elbows that should always be nice and tucked when you're doing the positioning of the hands is what affects which kind of bicep curl you're doing. If you want to focus on that peak, that long head, you want to have your hands in there. If you want to focus on the core head, which is the width, right here, you want to stick that right side. Then you're going to want to keep your elbows in and go wide with the hands. Basically, whatever part of your bicep you can see in the mirror is the part that you're going to be training the hardest. So that's how you can kind of differentiate between those. Now I'm super far behind them, so I'm gonna hop back into this exercise right here. Ben, up, drop those hips a little bit. There you go. Victor, I think training at home has been really good for your uh, ladder raises, because you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Bennett, try to keep those hips neutrally aligned when you do your modified tigers. My what? Your hips. Thick enough, really. Try to keep them straight line when you do your modified tigers. Uh -huh. <sighs> <sighs> And biceps, right? Biceps is the last one. Yep. Yeah. And all we have left is abs. Because I got, I stood up and I was like, you, I'm like, is biceps the last one or? As long as you do all three, it doesn't matter what order is that much. Oh, yes, I'm going to do that. I 
All right, last time through, all three of those. Then all we have left is Ash. We do it on time. Oh, I'm going to read this first. You'll notice when I do my ladder raises, I have a slight forward lean. It's actually something that you want to do. Both of how actually lines up, it isn't right down in the middle. It's slightly offset towards the back. So if you have a slight forward that I have, you'll make sure you're fighting gravity as hard as possible. For the sake of variation, for my last set of triceps, I'm going to do dips, which you can do on the back of two chairs. Can you do like regular dips, like on the couch? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like dipping your butt? So if you want to do chair dips or couch dips, as Victor was just asking about, what you want to make sure you're doing, a lot of people do them like this. This is not good for your rotator cuff. This is not good for your shoulder. You want to make sure you turn your hands sideways. And all you're going to do, back and up, just like that. Just make sure your hands are pointing out, not forward. <laughs> oh, these chairs are about to fall over. If you have to do them on the back of two chairs. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to finish out those. Last set of biceps. So I'm going back to long head. Now we're going to finish out with some ads. Ah, it was cute. It's cute. I'm not keeping the way that I want. I'm going to make sure that I don't get the most of what I want. So, in the interest of making them more difficult. Exactly. I can't go to any of the things that you can do. Yeah, no problem. I'm going to demonstrate how you can do the absolute hardest ab exercise ever created with just the edge of a couch. Very thing heavy. What I'm going to do right now is called a dragon flag. You weren't expecting that. I can't do that in this room. Oh, okay. Well, if you can't do a dragon flag, what you can do instead would be something called heels to, heels to the heavens. It's going to look like it's this right here. Here you come down. Okay, that's for the... Come up. Nice and slow on the way back down. What I'm going to do instead, is I'm going to see if I can do a dragon flag on the edge of my bed. Should be, should be heavy enough. <clears throat> My entire bed moved on that one rep, so that's unfortunate.
Instead, I'm going to finish out. <laughs> or I could just reset my bet on it. Be right. Either way. <laughs> Three shots. <laughs> yeah, I need more. And then, the because you want to give me the obliques and the rectus. What you can do is we're going to do a Russian twist, but we're going to do it with a knee. So it's going to be more difficult. So that's going to look like. Grab onto something that's fairly heavy. We're going to do a Russian twist, like we normally would, crossing the elbow over the knee. But we're also going to elevate our feet off the ground. So Russian twisting. And Make sure those moves are coming up towards the back. Now, if that is too difficult, if you can't do it at the same time, just try to keep your feet off. Now, that would be much more difficult than this. This kind of Russian twist. I'm not going to do all that much for you. Bring your knees off the ground. Or sorry, off the ground. And if you don't want it with the tuck as well, it'll make it even more difficult. So we're just going to run through one last set of abs because we train our abs five to seven times a week. We really only need to do two sets per rectus, two sets per obliques per day. So let's finish out right now. What? I said, I need to get an air conditioning unit. It's hot in here. That's a workout in your kitchen. <laughs> All right, let's finish up. Of course, we get time If you enjoyed that, I highly encourage you to head over to double-o.subsetfitness.com. That's zero zero dot uh, Register for one of my live workshops. I'm going to be teaching you exactly how you can lose fat very, very quickly without giving up any of the foods you love or spending a whole bunch of time in the gym. And I just recently added a huge like six-month training program that's all about training at home. 
to kind of corona proof the entire fitness industry for you. So if you enjoyed that, definitely head over there. If you're already a member of the Sub7 Nation, if you're already a double O, and just continue what you're doing. I hope that you enjoyed this workout. Like, comment, subscribe on the video, other YouTube stuff. I haven't made a YouTube video in a long time, so I don't remember what I'm supposed to say.